Hello and welcome to Jazz Tonight. I'm Michael Jacoby, executive producer of Jazz on the Plaza and host of Raising the Standards on KSCO Radio in Santa Cruz. This, our last week of our uh, year-long or summer-long homage to the great Billy Holiday. Joining me, uh, Tony Lindsay. Hey, now, let me explain. Uh, right now, Did echoing throughout you? the Bay Area. What's he doing here? <laughs> no. Uh, Tom Wopat had some personal problems, and we uh, had to cancel, and... Uh, I'm not him. No, and that, um, he'll be explaining that to several women later this evening. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, so, I could, the, the scene was, as a matter of fact, our friend Melissa, our producer here, texts me that says, Wopat, question mark. And I went, this can't be good. So, without going into details, I, 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 I wish Tom the best, because I, I, he's a marvelous performer, and I like him very much. Um, so I said, who am I going to call? And I said, my buddy Tony. And I picked up the phone and I said, uh, are you in town next month? <laughs> that, was, that was really nice of you. I and I was like, wow, you know, because we had so, we had so much fun. And the last oh, one you were such we a wonderful hit earlier in the year. And we're delighted to have you back. But you were, in fact, uh, because as a... Uh, uh, the, the line I use way too much, that you do indeed move around like a wayward summer breeze. That's true. And you've just been, gotten back from Germany. Germany, and uh, mm -hmm. I've been to a lot of places this year. Australia, New Zealand, yeah. uh, went to the, to the uh, America's Cup in Bermuda, and, and here, and back to Germany, so, and all of that. Well, let's talk about uh, Tony Lindsay and the Soul Soldiers. Yes. Uh, which is, uh, I mean, you wear many hats, and you, you need to work. Not because you need the money, seven, you pay well, but you love to work. Seven different bands I'm working yeah. with right now. And, and you love four it, right? of Four of them I booked myself. You've got the Santana tribute groups in Europe, right? And one here. One here as well. Um, Soul Soldiers, Spangalang, yeah. Tommy Igo, yeah. the big band thing that he does. Um, but uh, you live for that. Uh, I mean, you really. It. And, and it's cool because I get to mix things up. And we got a little, we got a little twist for the, uh, for the show today with Soul Soldiers. Okay, let's talk about that because yeah. folks that may have seen you earlier in the year, and again, my disclaimer that by the time you see this, it will be well past the end of the year. <laughs> uh, but it's a little different, uh, different group. We have a uh, beautiful female with us today. She right. plays keys. Sounds she just like, like Carol King. She is unbelievable. I saw you guys with that uh, uh, layout of the group at uh, the Monterey Jazz yes. Festival last year, and you killed. It was wonderful. We're going to have two keyboard players today. Okay. So she'll she'll be uh, she she's just amazing. Me, yeah. I do a lot of stuff with her, and she's a great. She teaches. Yeah. Matter of fact, she's taught uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, females that are pretty big stars now. Uh, you ever heard of a lady from uh, Oakland named Lettucey? I have. That's uh, one of her. Really? Lettucey is one of her students, and there's been quite a few other ones too. Um, a term that I um, despise. Is the uh, is the phrase tribute band, which you guys are not, and I've always sworn I would not have one at Jazz in the Plaza. Having seen your approach, mm -hmm. I mean, because uh, I mean, if a jazz singer is doing Rogers and Hart and you're doing Motown, it's the same deal. We're yeah, still yeah. we're still diving in to perhaps a different era of the songbook, but yours is more of a nod than than yeah. Uh, well, it's a tribute as well, but it's not an imitation. Well, most of the most of the tribute bands, they just they focus on one artist, right? And they just do everything. And we we hit, and uh, you'll everybody. do different arrangements, though, yeah. Which which I find extraordinary. Well, even even a lot of them, um, you know, the arrangements we just uh, uh, when we, once we get into the song, yeah, it arranges itself, yeah. You know, because so we, you we bring like the improvise. jazz side to exactly. it, the spontaneity, and you know, it may start. Motor City, exactly. But it may, you know, there's morph no, into something. There's else. no telling where it's going to end up. Yeah, that's true. That's and it's true. cool. We cover we cover a lot of now. Now that we have Miss Janice with us, we yeah. we can cover Nancy Wilson, Aretha yeah. Franklin, Etta James, yeah. and and people just love it because what's Janice's last name? Janice Maxi Reed. Ma Maxi Reed. Okay. You know, it's um, the the stuff that we're doing, nobody plays this kind of stuff yeah. anymore. You know. And we mix it up with Bill Withers and Lou Rawls yeah, and, and Sam and, Cook and, and you know and all the that. The response earlier in the season was just remarkable, and and we have had a, a, a terrific season. Oh, did I say so myself? But no, we, we yes, have, and we have. Uh, <laughs> Billy's over my shoulder and been watching over me the entire season, uh, but we've had such a such a good run, 
Uh, and apart from this little hiccup uh, with, uh, with uh, the last show, we're going out in style. And yeah, you it's going to be never, a good. Just, just one more rock out. We're well, one, one great compliment that I, that I got when we were here last time is uh, the folks that were selling merchandise. They said, you know, they said, we're going to come down here volunteering to sell the merchandise for a long time. And this was the first time that we couldn't see the stage because there's so many people yeah, up dancing. Yeah. So we couldn't even see you guys. We can hear you. Well, the, um, uh, to me, the real treat uh, uh, or, the, uh, or the real evidence of a great season is, and it happened last uh, Thursday morning for the ninth consecutive week, someone saying to me, that was the best show ever. That wow. one was. And tomorrow, it'll, it'll be, be the same, same thing. way. You know, that's, that's a good thing. That, that's just great. That, that, I think that. it's uh, th there's just something in the air around here now because, yeah. you know, even with the uh, San Jose Jazz Festival, you know, they had they had a great one this year, too. Yeah. It's just, I think it's uh, something with the Bay We're Area. We're very boutique here. Yeah. I, th I think that's, I mean, it really is. I've often said that jazz and, uh, and, and popular music needs to be seen up close and personal. Absolutely. I mean, to share it. And, I, and, I, and I've told this story before, but I remember... Uh, my daughter going to see Britney Spears and saying, well, we sat right next to a screen. And you know, I went, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I used to sit and Sinatra would look at me and I'd look at him. That's I mean, it. that's how it's supposed to be done. And he was actually singing. Yeah, yeah. Instead of lip syncing. Yeah, it would go figure, go figure. You know, Speaking, I, and we were talking, uh, where are we going to go in our second part of the interview? Oh. Tony Lindsay, part go, two. Go anywhere you want. Part two. Let's talk a little bit, having uh, me having brought up Sinatra. Um, favorite live show, I don't care the genre, favorite live show you've ever seen? Oh my, jeez. My favorite live show, that's a tough one. Or give me a couple, you don't need to narrow it down. Because, well, I, um, I, I, I guess I'll have to say because I saw him for the first time um, last week at the San Jose Jazz Festival and I happened to write a song that was on one of their records, mm -hmm. a group called, an R&B group called The Whispers. Yeah. Sure. They knocked me out. Really? And these guys are in their 70s now. Yeah. And Very like, cool. Wow. No lip syncing. No. The band, I mean, they were tight. You know, it's like that. Uh, uh, and uh, I mean, I went to see Neil Diamond. He knocked me out, too. And you, you might not have expected it. Sure didn't. <laughs> you know, the thing, the thing that amazed me was um, the place that we went to see him. Uh, this is back when I was with Santana. Yeah. The next night, we played in the same place. Yeah. Neil Diamond had the, the place was completely sold out, yeah. and everybody in that place knew every word to That's every true. one of his yeah. songs. Yeah. And I that, saw that, that killed me. I saw Frank a lot, but I also saw um, the Highwaymen when it was uh, Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings. So you got to see some good and uh, who was the fourth guy? Oh, Chris Christopherson, uh. which uh, which was pretty astounding. Yeah, this guy's that I that I I'm sorry that I I didn't get to see. You never Frank. seen Willie? I never get not never seen Willie Nelson. Yeah. Never saw Frank Sinatra yeah. live. Never saw Elvis Presley. It would have been nice I saw to see. Elvis. Uh, I saw Elvis. Uh, just to see, because I like to see what, the, especially when the ladies go crazy with yeah, these cats. Yeah. I want to I yeah. want to know what you that is. You can always get a because I want some of that. That's exactly right. And you, you really well, don't get it from it. a video. No, no, you, you got to be there live. Tom Jones is another one. Tom Jones, who Terry, my partner Terry Hope, was telling me that she saw him. Might have been the bridge concert that uh, he came out and stole it. Man, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I I was knocked out by him back. Remember when yeah, he had his TV show? Well, Circle Star I used to see him at. Yeah, but he had, he had his yeah, TV sure. show, and there was nothing but women in the oh, audience. Oh, sure. Men were not allowed. That's true. And I went, that's what that's I want to do. That's a good thing. Between that and the Beatles, you know, when I seen women. Too young for the Beatles, right? I seen women. No, no. You saw the Beatles? Oh yeah, but especially when I saw the girls crying and stuff yeah. and throwing throwing things no, up. So on you screen. saw him a candlestick? I didn't see him live. Oh, that's why I meant. Okay. When I was coming up as a yeah. kid, because you know we coming up as a kid, we used to uh, do a lot of the Beatles songs sure. in our in our band. So. Tell me about the where'd you go to high school? Kingston, New York. And tell me about uh, the rock and roll band, Garage Band, that you were in. Oh man. Well, um, give me some names. Well, I started when I was seven years old. And the group that I sang, that, that I was in, I was, the, I was the youngest one. It was four of us called Four of a Kind. It was an a cappella singing group. And I d did that up until This I is pre-Michael Jackson, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. You know, uh, my dad used to work, into, work in the uh, hotels in upstate New York. Yeah. And every time they'd have some kind of event there, he'd, hey, you know, my, my son, they got this little singing group 
So they'd have us come and do the shows at these uh And what kind of stuff would you do? We did anything we want. We did like Temptation, Doo-wop, we that did kind of thing. Smokey Robinson, we did the Beatles, yeah. we did some Santana stuff, we mixed it up. You know, and I didn't what? even know who a lot of those people were. We were doing their songs anyway. How cool. All right, who else did you see to be another group? Um, coming up as a kid? Yeah. Wow. Did you go to Days on the Green? Were you out, uh, what year did you come out here? I came out here in 1980. But 80. what I did so see. So Days on the Green, did you ever go to those? Never went to those, okay. but okay. I went to school at uh, my college at Albany State University in okay. upstate New York. And I uh, saw Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. John Lucien. Uh, who else was on that? Uh, uh, Gil Scott Heron. You saw Gil Scott Heron. Yeah. Now, see, that is painfully hip. That was so cool. Our buddy Giacomo Gates was out a couple years ago, and Giacomo did, a, did an album of, of Gil Scott stuff. Five bucks for those concerts. Oh, there's a great... Uh, five bucks. There was a great oh. fundraiser, and I can't remember, for a place in Harlem. This is like 57. And the most expensive ticket was 450, and it was headlined, headlined by Sonny Rollins. Billy Holiday was wow. there. Uh, I mean, it was just it was just crazy. And Miles was there. Wow. Did you ever see Miles? Never saw him play. Yeah. Played with a lot of guys that um, that they played, played with him, him though. Yeah. Well, Benny Reedfeld, the uh, bass player with Santana, he yeah. he was uh, played with Miles he Davis for a long time. Great story. Yeah, they were crazy ones because yeah. you know Miles was a uh, Miles was uh, was he an was odd a cat. different kind of cat. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he was. Uh, I saw Louis Armstrong once. Wow. At, which was pretty amazing at um, San Jose City College. And uh, of all wow. places, Louis Armstrong was, well, just amazing. It's, 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 it's Now, have you been, you've spent a lot of time in New York. Have yes. you gone out to the, uh, his house and museum in Queens? No. It's totally cool. Really? And he, he um, and I'll tell you a real quick story. We were there, at, uh, uh, we were following, it was like at the end of the day, and I, I called up the press department to, to get a tour, and they said, we haven't got any special docents. You can follow the, there's an elementary school going in front of you. Mm -hmm. You can just follow. I said, fine. So we follow around. And um, somebody somebody pointed out that there were a lot of ashtrays in the house. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the guy says, well, Miss, Mr. Armstrong smoked a little. But really? Wasn't well, that dangerous for you? And he goes, it's a lot. And I'm looking at the guy going, <laughs> and he goes. Wow. <laughs> and he says, do you know why whenever Dizzy left the room, Louis would follow him? Because he had the good smoke. That really? Was the, yeah, that was the secret. And I'll tell you another thing about the house that you got to see. <laughs> in uh, his wife, Lu was it Lucille? I think it was Lucille. The kitchen, yes. all the appliances, including the toaster and all the cupboards, are painted in it like an automobile paint, like a Studebaker would have in this weird blue. That's weird. And it's just stunning when you walk in. But it's... Uh, they never changed anything. Yeah, he, di he died at the house and uh, what a... What a special guy. You're watching, uh, we're with Tony Lindsay. I'm delighted to have him here, and I thank him publicly for, for his kindness in, uh, in not only bailing us out, but also raising the standard and uh, him uh, performing once again in the Plaza Force. Uh, and also, as this uh, being our last show of the year, uh, I want to give a really a, a, a huge shout out to the good folks at O'Connor Hospital, a division uh, part of Verity Health, um, who have been here for us, and it, it means the world to us. And uh, since they're not in studio, I can announce that they've uh, signed a contract for the next 10 years. But uh, we'll see, <laughs> see, see if that holds up. So we're going to take, take a little minute to uh, hear about O'Connor Hospital. We'll be right back with Jess tonight. At O'Connor Hospital, we're restoring health together. Step by step, together. Because care is better together. O'Connor, together in health. At O'Connor Hospital, we're shortening your wait time because in an emergency, every minute counts. This is our commitment to you. O'Connor Hospital, together in help. Welcome back to Jazz Tonight uh, as uh, we bid a fond uh, adieu to our 15th season. And I was thinking this morning, I think I'm good for another 15 years. But my only concern is I'll be 80 and we're going to have to... Yeah, Getting but, that walker on stage. Yeah, but that's not uh, that's not old. Eighties, the new seventy. Yeah, <laughs> and, and dead is the new ninety. How does that work? Well, you know, my <laughs> my my plan is to um, uh, at least a hundred years old yeah. for me. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go book yourself that. somewhere at a hundred. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be I'll I'll be sitting in a chair singing probably, yeah. but uh, uh, I'm still gonna do it. We uh, the four four of a kind. 
There's when you were seven. Kind. All right, give me some other names uh, as wow. you as you get. Give me a high school band name. Uh, Cold Sweat and the Prospects. See, there you go. There's something <laughs> that's not memorable. Yeah, Cold, Cold Sweat, Sweat and the Prospects. And the prospects. We yeah. did, of course, you know, you then James we started Brown? doing some James Brown yeah, stuff sure. then. Yeah. Did you ever see James? Yes. Okay. Sure did. It was it was on the on yeah. the other side yeah, though. Yeah. You know, he was um I sure would have loved to see him in his prime because yeah. boy, he he was the man. Who was the actor that did uh stand up or that did the film about uh, he also played Jackie Robinson in forty two. I can't He did think James Brown? Name. He did James Brown in Get On Up. Did you ever see that? I haven't seen oh, that. Oh, you'd love it. I mean he's again this guy's really terrific. Wow. It's one of the great uh you know, like Walk the Line. There, there are a few bio, biographical films that actually worked. Well, there was, um, there was one James Brown one that actually is probably one of the uh, last few that came out. Yeah. That some of the guys that used to play with him, when they saw it, they went, No, no, that no. that's not even the accurate. The fabulous Flames. <laughs> we also had a, uh, we loved the Beatles so much that uh, we kind of na we named our group the Crickets. For the a Crickets. While. <laughs> Until Buddy Holly's estate got after you, right? Yeah, the crickets <laughs> and cold sweat in the prospect. Uh, you like that name? You, you oh like yeah, that, that was name. funky, that man. Was a, that was a cool name. That was pretty that was funky. A cool name. So you did? Um, uh, did you play? You played instrument? I played a little bit of keyboards because I I write a lot of stuff. Okay. So, you know, little keyboards and some now, drums. Uh, now, does the the whole high tech thing is? I mean, are you into that in terms of you can lay a track down and you know you can say. I mean, it practically it doesn't write itself. I know that. Yeah. But practically, you can say, "I need a rhythm section in in B." I mean, you can do that, right? You could do pretty much anything you want. I mean, that old the old way of uh, the tape rolling and, yeah. and you know, that that doesn't happen anymore. Actually, some of it is coming back because um, there's a lot of um, uh, producers that they they like the digital recording thing. But they also like well things we, going to tape because they can saturate that tape. We were the, talking to Tiffany Austin. Have you ever seen her, by the way? We had her. Here I think that was week. when I, I couldn't make it down. Oh, for, she, uh, she's wonderful. But we were talking about vinyl and that you, for oh, years when CDs came yeah. out, you went, "Wow, this is the best ever." But the fact is, vinyl, it's an art. It's I mean, pretty big now. Too. Of, yeah, it's come back. Yeah, it's come back. And it's expensive too. Yo, uh, you know, actually, Will Pat. His last uh, album he it's did, crazy. he released on vinyl as well. I remember I used to go to Tower Records. Yeah, sure. I used to go there once a month, and I would bar I would walk out of there with probably a minimum of 10, 10 new albums. You can't do that yeah. now. Those things are, I don't even know how much the vinyl costs anymore. But I, I don't know even it's know where you get a stylus. <laughs> is the problem. Yeah. Did you used to go to record stores? I was thinking about, I used to go to a place in Valley Fair. My brother worked at Harrison Frank or something, and they had the sound rooms. Do you remember those? Yeah. You go in and you had what the headphones. What was the name of this store that they had? I there? don't remember. Does anybody know? Uh, the Valley Fair. There was a record store there for years. It wasn't Tower remember. Records there. Either. No, it wasn't a tower. It was like a mom and pop one, uh, but they had the little individual rooms. Now they have the uh, all these. Um, is, are there record stores? There's some record Vir stores. Is Virgin still in New York? I don't think so. But yeah. Rasputin, they got a Rasputin. Right oh, over Rasputin there and there, Campbell. In yeah. The Bay Area. They yeah. got one in Campbell too. Yeah. There's one in uh, Hayward. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. So you can uh, you can take all your own eight tracks there, right? All of them. <laughs> all of those. The Superfly, you know. Did you ever record anything that was on eight track? No. That would <laughs> that be, cool. be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. That'd be a collector's item. Huh? <laughs> I wonder if they probably still can do it. There must be Santana on eight track. That, when would, Santana, that wouldn't surprise when me. When did at Santana all? start? '68 is when they had their big, their first uh, big hit. Black Magic, oh, Woman. Black Magic Woman. And when did you join it? 1990. Oh, you joined that one. I'm you a and young I are cat, about, man. How old are you? How old you am I? Oh, I'm 25. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm 62. I'm 65. Sort of the same generation. Yeah. Um, Don't but you tell anybody. That's right. Keep that here. That's why I said 15 years, you're coming <laughs> back for my, fi my, final, uh, my final year at Jazz and Plaza. When I'm That'd 80, be great. I'm going to bring this 78 year old or 77 year old uh, I'll still be doing stud it. coming back. I'm still going to be doing Who's it. Who's just going? Yeah. I am, man. I, I, I just Cold love, sweat. I just love <laughs> I love doing what I do. That's, that's why I was saying the, like the seven different groups. I just, you, I, I found out when you mix it up like that, it always keeps things fresh. You know, because if you're doing the yeah. same kind of stuff all the time, it, it, gets, it gets boring. 
Yeah. You know, anything. Do, are do. all, uh, I shouldn't say are all, but well, with a, with, a, with a true lack of record stores, most CD sales are live, correct? Well, that and uh, uh, with the internet, you'd be, it'd be Yeah, we talked fact, about that last time. I eight, just got eight a. Eighth uh, of a cent. Did you get another check for 12 cents or what? No, I mine are actually, because um, I, I was CD Baby and iTunes and all of them. Okay, they, all right. Good. Matter of fact, I got a. Um, I opened up my email this morning, and the CD Baby informed me that they need uh, more CDs because they have run out. And uh, so I got to go to the go to the post office today and send them some more CDs. So see, and I'm not familiar with the website. CD Baby actually, needless to say, sells CDs. Oh yeah. Do you sign them? Would that make sense for them to sell um, signed CDs and get an extra buck out of it? Well, see, the thing is, if, if I sign them, then I'd have to open them before I send them. And oh, that's they, true. They want Good the point. packages yeah. sealed and. Because otherwise, it'd look well, like you're selling you used goods. Sign them before you close them. <laughs> that would solve I, the problem. I'd have to be at the factory. Well, you can do that. I'm telling you, it's not a bad idea for a couple bucks more. If I'm about to order a CD, I'm really going to sign it for two bucks or more? Oh, That's not a bad idea. Before I put my order in there, uh, I'll ask them that if I can come down Fly and Fly back there. I mean, if you're selling a thousand Put it right CDs. here in the Bay Area. Oh, that's an easy deal. <laughs> we almost had to edit this. Mm. Um, that'd be fun. All right. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay. You're out of high. You, you're in high school. You're doing a rock and roll band. Inevitably, buddies are going. Yeah, I'm going to go away to college. Or, well, me too. We can keep the band together. But did you did you form a group when you got to Albany State? As soon as I got to the first thing that I did, everywhere when I when I went to school at Albany State, um, then I moved off campus, and when I went to when I got to school, the first thing I did was I went around to each uh, one of the dormitories and, and found out who the musicians were. Oh, I think you went to a few sororities. You went to a few sororities as well, to check it out. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, and then when I moved <laughs> off that, campus, that was, yeah. I got with the with the local guys yeah. and, and, and ended up being in a band. When I came to California, I moved out here. I was out every single night of the week. Right. That was back in the day when... When Campbell, they had the bodega. They sure, had uh, they all had, of these places yeah. were really happy. Well, we right. met originally probably when I was running K-Pen. Yes. At the uh, at Bourbon Street. In, at the Old Mill Shopping Center. At the Center. Old Mill Shopping Center. It's not there anymore. No, they tore that down. And you know what? The, uh, the thing that I loved about K-Pen, too, you guys you guys really supported local acts. They yeah. Don't, they, do. Radio stations don't do that anymore. No, they don't. Well, I do on my show. Yeah? I get live people in all the time. Speaking of live people, you're going to do a little gig for Terry Hope. Yes. Yes. She is. She is so excited about. Me that. too. And I'm we'll, gonna. Uh, and we'll get we'll get the news out to people. But maybe we, uh, I might have to come up to your and, and come do be something. on the show. I would love to have you on the show. You got to come to Santa Cruz, but we'll give you a, your own shopping cart. So when is it? Uh, it's you, on Saturday, so we'd love to have you on. I think we tape one to two on Saturdays. We're gonna have so, to do that. Yeah, we'd love to have you in the studio. That'd be fun. We've had Pamela Rose. Uh, We've got a couple guys. Tammy been, Hall, who's Paula yeah, Webster. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she was she was in the studio with. Uh, We've had a lot of a uh, lot of people. A lot. We do a live. Uh, wonderful woman named Carolyn Sills. I don't know if you know her. No. But she's big on the uh, country uh, country charts. She has a wonderful Patsy Cline. Um, okay, so uh, so you came out here right after college. In the, in Actually, I, I I stayed in Albany for about eight years, and now, I is Albany worse than Buffalo in terms of weather? No, Buffalo, Buffalo is because Buffalo is further north. It's right on by Niagara Falls. Right. But Albany is 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 really bad. Is it's, Niagara Falls cool? Yeah, okay. I saw both sides of it too, the uh, the U.S. side and the yeah. Canadian really? side, which is cool. Which the water's clear on which side? Both sides. Both sides. <laughs> that, that water is pretty. It's pretty. Now, amazing. is the th can't you go? What is the thing called that goes underneath the boat, and then you wear a raincoat? Doesn't it sail right under they the goes, boat? Yeah, they have. Yeah. yeah, I saw some of those people yeah. in. Uh, <laughs> you saw some of the people wa you know, wash up. That's kind of bold. Yeah, because yeah. that water is coming down yeah. pretty doggone hard. Yeah, but it, it's beautiful stuff. But Albany is, um, it's uh, not as far north as Buffalo. Yeah. But it's cold, man. It is, it's too cold. That's why I moved. I couldn't take yeah. that. I couldn't take it anymore. But you didn't know any better, though, right? No. Uh, with your kid? Yeah. I mean, I grew up in Chicago, and I thought, it's not that hot. Well, I knew. I go back to Chicago. It's that hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I knew because living in Albany, which was the capital, there's, there's a lot of tunnels underneath the ground that you, if, if you find out where they're at, you don't have to go outside. Really? Yeah. You mean on the campus or the whole town? Well, uh, especially when you get to the downtown area, yeah. because that's where all the politicians and all of them are down in that way. Yeah. And oh. I used to live down that way. So I, I used to work at um, 
uh, in the mail room at the Empire State Plaza while I was going to uh, college to here. Lead and tunnel. I found out where those tunnels were. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs> it was warm down there. You, you go back at all? You still have family back there? Yeah, they're back. My family's in Kingston, though. Mm. I go back every now and then. Now, how far is Kingston from Fayette City? Kingston from New York City is 92 miles north of New York City. Okay. I'm right by Woodstock. Woodstock, eight, all right. mi eight yeah. miles from my hometown. Did you live there when Woodstock happened? No. No. <laughs> but you know, you had a bit of a flashback there. But now the no. other thing, <laughs> the other thing is, um, uh, a friend of mine shot a. Uh, we did a little documentary of uh, four of a kind. Yeah. A lot of the footage was messed up, but he he managed to find enough good footage that he put uh, this thing together, and he entered it into the uh, Woodstock Film Festival. You're kidding. So if, if we get nominated for something... Now, wait a minute. Is this somewhere on YouTube that people can see you singing at seven years old? Maybe. Maybe? There's, there was actually, there's, there's, not, this. there's, not, much, there's not much uh, uh, footage because nobody could find any of this stuff mm -hmm. when we were younger like that. Yeah. But we, we did a lot of talking about it, and we went around the town and, um, you know, see how things changed and all of that. And it really came out good. Well, so we'll see. I am delighted you're back. Uh, Me too. I, uh, with you being here, I get to do one of my least favorite things in the world, being, uh -oh. a, being a judge at a white people dance contest. There are <laughs> never any winners. <laughs> no, there's but gonna you, be. you certainly get them up on their feet. There's going to be uh, several. Lost Status me. loves you, and I love you for being here, and I, I can't thank you enough. You got it. It's good thank seeing you. you. And for those of you wondering, what the heck would they talk about the second half hour? We found something. We talked about everything. That worked out well. Hey, you talk about life. That's right. Folks, I, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for a special season. Next year, we will be paying a tribute to uh, Ella Fitzgerald. So uh, looking forward to that. It has uh, flown by, and, uh, and as always, uh, I, thank, uh, I thank the volunteers, my partners, Terry Hope and Jonathan Knowles, and everybody, and my producer, Melissa Torn, and the good guys here at KCAT who have been so helpful. The studio audience, Lou, who's here every week. He's got nowhere to go, folks. But he has a CD that's coming out. And I thank you for helping keep Jazz alive. Until next year, when we once again visit Jazz tonight, I'm Jacoby. I'll see you soon. In other words... You